So the question says, please help me understand. Well, okay, it's a little introduction. Please help me understand how to see if there's a conservative force or not acting as I'm trying to teach this section to myself. So that is really hard. So well done and keep, keep on just moving forward with your work and we will help you wherever we can. So just remember, we need to know the difference between a conservative force and a non-conservative force. So conservative force is the force of gravity. And that's the only one that you will really work with, with work energy power. There are other conservative forces, and an example would be electrostatic force. So an electrostatic force of attraction is another conservative force. Um, another one I can think of would be magnetic forces. Those will also be conservative forces. So you see, we don't really work with electrostatic forces here or magnetic forces. So yes, the only one that you will get to work with really in work energy power is the force of gravity. So that's a conservative force. Now, there are going to be lots and lots of non-conservative forces with this question. So a non-conservative force will be, for instance, air friction, force of friction if it's moving on a surface, what other ones non-conserved, tension in the rope, possibly if there's a cyclist cycling up a hill or down a hill, his pedaling power is a non-conserved force. What about the force of a car engine? So the force of a car engine where it's moving up or down a slope is also a non-conserved force. So let's put it to you this way. The conservative forces will only be the force of gravity. Everything else is going to be non-conserved forces generally. Okay, so hopefully that clears that one up. Then obviously looking to the definitions, the conservative force is when an object, when work is done, and that work that is being done is independent of the path taken by the object. The non-conserved force is going to be the work done on the object and it's dependent, it depends on the movement or on the path that the object took. All right, so hopefully that clears that one up. Your other question here said, what's work? All right, so if we have a look at our information sheet, on the information sheet, you're going to see this equation. W equals F or W net. Well, let me first, I tell you what, let's go to the, I want to show you first what it looks like. So it wasn't that one. Here it is here. So, okay, here it is here. Let me just get my pen, the color. All right, so here it is here. All right, so there W equals F delta X cos theta. And here's the other important equation that you're going to work with a lot of the time. So the first one is W equals F delta X cos theta, and then W net equal to delta E K. All right, so let's go back to our question. So W equals F, actually, let's just erase this here. All right. So it equals F times delta X times cos theta. All right. So W, this is the work. So this is the work that is being done on an object. All right. So the work that is being done, we notice, is going to be equal to this force over here. Now this force has to remain constant while it is being applied. So it's a constant force. We can't have this force changing because as that force is changing, the amount of work being done is going to change. So it's a constant force. So work is then really looking at this constant force. And what is this constant force doing? Well, if I look at this equation, this constant force is applied for a certain distance or displacement. So remember, Work is actually a scalar quantity. So this F here, we're looking at the magnitude. The magnitude of the force. And it's the product of the magnitude. So it's multiplied. So remember, um, it's multiplied. It's the product of the magnitude of the displacement. And looking at the product of this cos theta. Now this cos theta, this angle, 
is the angle between the force that's being applied and the distance that is being traversed or the distance traveled. All right, so it's the angle. So in other words, if I have a force being applied and my displacement is in the same direction as that force, then those two will have an angle of naught degrees. Maybe if the object is moving to the right, but they want to know what is the work being done by the force of gravity, now there's an angle of 90 degrees. Okay? So it is always the angle between the force that's been asked and the displacement. What if they're asking you to calculate the work being done by the force of friction? Well, the displacement will be in one direction and the force of friction is obviously in the opposite direction to the motion. So now the angle is 180 degrees. So now theta becomes 180 degrees, etc. All right. So when I'm looking at the work, the work is a constant force, or it's the work being done by a constant force, and this constant force is really just looking at the force with the product of its distance, or just the magnitude of the displacement, multiplied by the cos of the angle between the force and the displacement. So hopefully that explains what is work. But it's all dependent on that equation of W equals F delta X times cos theta. All right, so let us have a look at the question that you sent in. All right, so now the question states, a car of mass 960 kilograms. Okay, let's just clean up the page here a bit. So now, with physics, always think with your pencil. So the question that was sent in doesn't have a diagram. All right, so you think with your pencil. So with physics, that is key. Draw the diagram, put all the information that they've given you onto the diagram. So I find that you guys are living in a very visual age. You're bombarded with images. So you can go onto YouTube, you can go onto um, make, uh, whatever, whatever platform you are working with. If you're on Facebook, there are many, many pictures. Instagram. All right. So always draw a diagram, put everything onto that diagram and then try and analyze the question. All right, so let's break it up. So it says we've got a car of mass 960 kilograms. So there is my flat surface. There is my car. And they say this car has a mass of 960 kilograms. And there it goes. And it's on a flat surface and it's traveling. So it's got an initial velocity of 100 kilometers per hour. Then it says the driver applies brakes exerting a constant force of 800 newtons. So there's a braking force. So F braking, I'm going to just write it like that. They're telling me is 800 newtons over a distance of 80 meters. So this was applied over 80 meters. If a constant frictional force, okay, so they say there's a frictional force acting of 240 newtons, and this is acting over 40 meters, calculate. So the first thing they want us to calculate, A, is the work being done by the braking force. The work being done by the braking force. Okay. Now this question I found a little bit confusing because they gave me the braking force over 80 meters, but they gave me the force of friction only over 40 meters. So now it doesn't say anything further. All right. So my gut feel is here, we can work out the braking force. You could have done it in two ways, over 80 meters or over 40 meters. So what I would suggest, if the question is unclear, so maybe this is what threw you off because they haven't specified, is actually do both. So if it's ambiguous like that, because that's a very ambiguous question, so you can interpret 
interpreted either way, the marks have to be allocated. So I do know that in your final exam, your examiners are really spot on and they will iron out anything like that. All right, so that shouldn't be ambiguous. Okay, that's first of all. So what I would suggest, if you've got time in the exam, do both if it's unclear. So for now, I'm going to say to you, for me, reading through the rest of the question, I'm assuming it's going to be for 40 meters, because they go on to ask us the work being done by the force of friction over 40 meters. Then they want to know the net work being done over 40 meters. Then they want to know the net force over 40 meters, etc., etc. So I think they wanted the breaking force over 40 meters. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so I think this is possibly why you found this a little bit ambiguous. So we're going to work out the work being done by the breaking force. So it's going to equal F times delta X times cos theta. Okay, what was the breaking force? They gave it to me as 800 newtons. Now remember, this is a constant force. So if it was constant over 80 meters, it's constant over, obviously, 40 meters. Multiplied. Now, this is the tricky one. All right, so if we have a look at this question, all right, what do we notice? So the car is moving forward, all right, so as it's traveling forward, the driver applies brakes. What does that mean? It means there's a negative acceleration. The acceleration is in the opposite direction to the motion. So what is actually happening? The car is slowing down, all right? So what do we need to see is that the two forces acting on the car as it's moving forward, we have a braking force acting in the opposite direction and we have got then obviously the force of friction. So if I had to draw the free body diagram for this, I would draw something like this, all right? So I would show there's my big fat dot and I would show that there's a force acting back, that would be the braking force and there would be force of friction acting on this object. Alright, so obviously the object is moving in this direction, so in which direction is the braking force and the force of friction acting is acting in the opposite direction, so there's an angle of 180 degrees, so this is going to be the cause of 180 degrees. So it's going to equal, so we need our famous calculator. And you know me and this calculator. All right, so we're going to have 800 multiplied by 40 multiplied by the cos of 180. And that should give us the answer. So it's equal to minus 3 two, one, two, three joule of energy. And there we go. All right, so that was the first part of the question. Not too difficult. The only problem here was, do I use 40 meters or 80 meters? So the question was very unclear. So don't worry, it wasn't you. It was actually the question. All right, but going on into the next part of the question. So looking at what B was asking. So B is asking you to work out the work being done by the frictional force. So the work being done by the force of friction is also going to be now the force of friction multiplied by delta x minus, sorry, multiplied by cos theta. So the force of friction was 240 newtons, so it was given, multiplied by the 40 meters, multiplied by the cos of 180. So hopefully you remember I said to you, the braking force is in the opposite direction and here I've got the force of friction also in the opposite direction to the motion. So the angle was 180 degrees. Okay, so it's going to equal, let's get our calculator. We can clear that. So it's 240 multiplied by 40 multiplied by the cos of 180 and that is equal to minus 9,600, minus 9,600 joule. And there we go. All right. C, question C says, you see, now C says, what is the net work done? So W net is the question. They want to know what is the net work done by the car? All right. 
So there are two ways of doing. So what I want to show you is working with forces from grade 11 first. So often I find that working with forces just simplifies the work question. All right, so let us work out F net, then we can work out W net. All right, so that is what I want to do here. So if I have a look at F net, so what are the two forces acting on the car? It is going to be the braking force. So remember these are vectors, so F net is equal to the braking force, vector braking force, plus the force of friction. All right. What was the braking force? It was minus 800 newtons plus what was the force of friction? Minus 240 newtons. So remember, your object is moving to the right. That was the displacement. So all of these forces are acting in the opposite direction to the motion. So my F net is going to be, so let's get the calculator. We don't make silly mistakes because that costs us in the exams. Whoopsie, so it's 800. All right, so the total is 1,000 minus 1,040 newtons. So it just means it's 1,040 newtons in the opposite direction to the motion. All right. So we weren't told if it was moving left or right. So if we indicated positive to the right, we could say to the left. All right, so that is the net force acting on the object. So therefore, W net equals F net times delta X times cos theta. So remember, we've done this before. So W net is what we are wanting is linked to F net. So the work being done is always linked to the force that you are using in that expression. So if you want to work out the work being done by the force of friction, I use the force of friction. If I want to work out the work being done by the braking force, I use the braking force. Okay, okay, so that is very important. So the force that you're using that question in that expression has to be linked to what you are trying to calculate. Okay. So W net equals F net. So we said F net is equal to 1040. Now you don't say minus. All right. So you don't say minus 1040. So remember, it comes up in that cos theta. Cos theta. So we're only putting the magnitude. So that's important. Please don't put in minus 1040 here. It's only 1040. That cos theta is the angle between the force and the distance. The magnitude of the displacement, which is distance, all right? So we don't put in that negative here, otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer, okay? So remember that. So it's 1040 multiplied. Now do you see, it's got to be over the 40 meters because the force of friction was over 40 meters. The braking force has to be over the same distance, otherwise how do you do it? All right, so that is why I'm saying to you, they should have actually led you into... Um, question A, and that was naughty of him. Okay, so that is why you, I think, struggled with this question. All right, so it was very misleading. So it wasn't you, it was the question. All right, times 40 times cos of the angle between them, we said is 180 degrees. So now we need our calculator. So it's 1040 multiplied by 40 and gives us 441,000. 600. Now cos 180 is minus, and there we go. Now remember, the work being done is a scalar quantity. You can't convert that minus into a direction. All right, work doesn't have a direction. It just means that in this instance where we have this breaking force and force of friction being applied to the object, the work being done by those two forces, we're actually losing energy. That energy is lost or technically it's being converted into other forms of energy. So in this instance, you might have felt the car tires, it's a car, so the car tires could heat up. When you're pushing an object or if it's slowing down, you might actually hear a noise. Maybe it's on gravel or even on a tar road. When you're applying brakes, you do hear a sound. So energy is converted into heat, 
sound. And if it's also maybe an accident, hopefully not, but if it was an accident, that metal crumples. And as that metal is crumpling, that is known as um, heat or energy being lost in order to crumple that metal. All right, that energy had to come from somewhere, all right, to make that uh, metal deform. All right, so energy is converted into other forms of energy. So it's not actually lost. So it's converted into other forms like heat, sound, and then also when the uh, metal is being crumpled. All right, good. So that is how I would have done that question. The other one that you could have done, if we just go up a bit here, All right, oh, sorry, I lost it there for a moment. The other one that I want to show you is that we could just say the net work done is equal to the work done by the breaking, f um, the work done by the breaking force plus the work done by the force of friction. So we could actually take these two, and this is why I'm saying to you the question had to have said over 40 meters because you can't work out the breaking force, the work done by the breaking force over 80 meters and the work done by this force of friction over 40 meters. So it had to be over the same distance, otherwise it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. All right. So another way that you could have done it, which is a really straightforward one, but I just want to show you is W net is equal to the work done by the breaking force Plus, plus, remember, work is a scalar quantity, so we always add the work done together, plus the work done by the force of friction. So now we're just going to add it in here. So now we go back again and get the work being done by the breaking force is minus 32,000 joule. So this was minus 32,000 joule plus the work being done by the force of friction, which is 9,600. All right, and now we just add those together. And so that would be a simple way of doing it. So it's, I'm gonna, okay, let's put the minus in. Minus 32,000 minus 9,600. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to put brackets in, minus 32,000, oh my goodness me, start again, minus 32, 1, 2, 3, let's go plus bracket, minus 9, 6, oh, oh, close bracket, equals, and there, we get exactly the same answer, so it's minus 41,600 joule. Let's just tidy that up a bit and give ourselves a little bit more space. So it's equal to minus 41,600 joules.